Tundo, praise the Lord. Your hands are more as they are coming. Your testimony, say your name and straight to the point, what the Lord did. Wonders without end. My name is Victoria Chin, and I'm on this altar today to testify on the goodness that the Lord has done for me. First of all, I thank God for because I did my KCP exams and I came out with I came out and passed my exams. Second, I thank God because I had applied for a certain scholarship, and I thank God because. It came out successful. successful. <laughs> During Shiloh 2014, that was my, my main prayer point, and also on the fasting and prayer, fasting and praying, that was also my main my main prayer point. I thank God because today it was when my mom was called and told that I had I I was one of those who had been chosen in that scholarship. I give God all the glory. Hallelujah. God will remember you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Put your hands up more for Victoria. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Heaven on earth. I want us without the end. That is my new realm and you are new realm. I have many testimonies to give in this test. I mean, it is uh, altar, but uh, I can't give them. They are too long and they are uh, wonderful. And some of them are uh, uh, from uh, I mean up to super. I mean, uh, uh, over. I mean, uh, be beyond the, the the natural. Some of them are beyond the natural. But I have to give this one because this one is clear and uh, and uh, <laughs> the straight. Yeah, yeah. I. My testimony is divine, is of divine change of apparel. I have been uh, desiring to put on Nigerian type of uh, mini attire, but uh, <laughs> I went around doing a mini window shopping, ch ch looking for the materials. But uh, wh while on the, on the process of looking for materials, the best materials, or during this uh, 21 days of uh, prayer and fasting, one member of this church um, placed me with two very nice Nigerian suits. <laughs> and I thank God for this uh, apparel. I thank God because uh, it is, uh, I give God all the glory in Jesus' name. God will clothe you in the name of Jesus Christ. I have another testimony to be read here, and the title is, God Struck on My Behalf. So listen carefully. For over four years, we had been waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb. However, a woman had always been monitoring my situ situation from time to time. She had been calling and asking me a series of que questions concerning my fruitfulness. During the service on January 2011, January 11, 2012, which was during the 21 day of prayer and fasting, the bishop said that we will hear news the following day. I believed and went home for my personal vigil, which was between 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. daily. After the vigil, the same woman called me as usual. This time, I told her that God had done it. While the phone was still in her hand, God struck her on my behalf. She started shouting, my chest, my chest. And she gave up the ghost immediately. She gave up the ghost, and immediately I saw a human figure walk out of me. Thank God now. I have my victory. Mrs. Busola Awe. Another testimony is from John Jew. Say, talks of divine favor. I was trusting God for favor. And he says, and I key to prophetic declaration. And he said, a helper of destiny came forth and paid his school fee and gave him new clothes. 
and this evening is here to give God all the glory. Of the truth, these are the doings of the Lord. I want us in our state position, lift our hands, lift our voices, and celebrate the doer of these testimonies. Father, we thank you. We celebrate you once again for appearing in our midst. Lord, for confirming your faithfulness. Thank you. I've never left us without, without a witness. Receive all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Your hands are more for Jesus. Oh, you are my helper. Oh. You are my healer. Oh. My healer. Oh. You are my lifter. Oh. My lifter. Oh. You are my savior. Oh. My savior. Oh. Jehovah, Jehovah, we praise your name. Somebody press it, press it, press it, press it, press it, press it, press it. Celebrate it. Oh, Jehovah, Jehovah, Jireh, we praise your name. Jehovah, the Lion of Judah, we praise your name. Jehovah, 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 we praise your name. Jehovah, Jehovah, we lift your name. Somebody lift him up, lift him up, lift Jesus high, lift him higher, higher, lift him Jesus higher, lift him higher, higher, lift him Jesus higher. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. Somebody praise him, 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 praise him. I say, praise the Lord. Somebody lift him high. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come on. Put your hands together for Jesus. And give him a shout of praise. Praise God. Come as a praise God. Throughout the year 2015, it shall be full of divine surprises for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Beginning from today, someone is living here now, and as you arrive home tonight, a miracle will welcome you back in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As you arrive at your office tomorrow, a miracle will welcome you into your office in the name of Jesus Christ. From areas you least expected, favor will come running towards you in the name of Jesus Christ. Favor shall rush towards you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Come on, say praise God. Some fellows here, God will give you international connections by the time this 21 days prayer and fasting is over in the name of Jesus you have been operating at the local level all this while but God shall be elevating you to an international sphere in the mighty name of Jesus Christ so shall it be for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth glory to God come as a glory to God mighty things the kind of things your ears have never had before. They are the kind of things God will do in your life in 2015 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. Please put your wonderful hands together for Jesus. And you may please be comfortably seated in the presence of the Most High God. Hallelujah. You had a testimony from Elder Jackson. He was believing God for a Nigerian attire. And within this 21 days prayer and fasting, he was praying for it. God used someone to bless him. And uh, he now has two beautiful Nigerian suits. That's how this year, God will decorate your life with beauty in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Glory to God. And the other lady was praying and praying and believing God for a scholarship. She prayed for that during Shiloh and then 21 days of prayer and fasting. That was her major point in these 21 days of prayer and fasting. And God has honored her faith. And today, 
she's testifying that she's among those giving a scholarship that's how god will give you a free gift within this season in the mighty name of jesus christ yeah. glory to god <laughs> glory to god god is good and all the time uh, heaven on earth and wonders without end uh, and that is my new realm and your new realm wonders without end every day of this year shall be christmas for you in the mighty name of jesus christ please expect it and then you will experience the same in the name of jesus christ don't forget this month has been declared as a month of prayer and fasting empowers for heaven and earth experience and that is what we are pressing into in this season of our 21 days prayer and fasting we are using the key of prayer and fasting in order for us to experience our heaven on earth dimension of blessings and testimonies and it's important for us to kick off in this wonderful teaching tonight that heaven on earth experience is a function of accepting spiritual responsibility to fast and pray it into manifestation. Drawing from the theme of the month, heaven on earth experience is a function of accepting spiritual responsibility to pray and fast it into manifestation. You've often heard that responsibility is the price for greatness. And it, until you are ready to accept responsibility of the events of your life, you remain a liability all the days of your life. It's accepting spiritual responsibility that makes you an asset. That makes you experience the heaven that God has promised us to experience here on the surface of the planet Earth. Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 9. Jesus, while teaching us how to pray, said when you pray, pray like this, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come and thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven we are the ones to pray heaven down on the earth jesus said when you pray pray like this thy kingdom come praise the name of jesus christ so until you are willing and ready to pray thy kingdom come prayers, you remain at the same spot all the days of your life. You have no one else to blame but yourself if you refuse to take hold of the bull by the horns. If you refuse to press in into the things that God has programmed for us this year, through prayer and fasting, in order for it to find expression in your life. Look at an example of what I'm talking about. In the book of Joel, chapter number 2. In Joel, chapter number 2, see a very vivid example of what I've just said right now. Joel, chapter number 2, things were not working for these people. But hear what God said to them in verse number 15, beginning. Joel 2, 15, I would like to read it so that you can see how this thing works. Joel 2, verse number 15, beginning. Things were not working and God told them, look, return to me. He told them in verse 12, return to me or turn to me and I'll, uh, with all of your heart. And then he said to them in verse 15, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Verse 16. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. And the bride out of her closet. Verse 17. Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, 
weep between the porch and the altar and let them say spare thy people O Lord and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them wherefore should they say among the people where is their God then, verse 18, can you see that word? Then, as a result of the fast, as a result of the prayers, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. That shows you that my prayer and your prayer, my fasting and your fasting, is one instrument to, that, that, we, that we use to stir God to jealousy. To stir God to jealousy. To make him jealous over us. Then shall the Lord be jealous over his people and pity his people. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Come and say, praise the name of Jesus Christ. And what will happen? Look at what happens next. Yeah, the Lord will answer. Can you see? To every prayer, there is an answer. Come on. To every prayer you pray, there is, a, there is what? An answer. Your prayer is what will provoke the answer from heaven. And the Lord will answer. And say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn. Because that was what was missing in their lives before. I will send you corn and wine and oil. And ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Reproach comes to an end in your life from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. Just talking about the satanic demonic forces in our own context satanic demonic forces oppressing your life i will remove them far away from you god said i will drive them into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hind apart toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up i will destroy him and he will stink amen you become rotten and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he the lord have done great things verse 21 Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do what kind of things? Great things. And in this season of prayer and fasting, what will God do in your life? Great things. In this year, 2015, what will God do in your life? Great things. The Lord will do great things. Why? Because we have invoked his presence. We have provoked him to jealousy through our prayer and our fasting. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So fear not. So I'm announcing to somebody here, I'm announcing to somebody here today that whatever negative thing you have seen in your life before, after this season of prayer and fasting, every negative thing in your life shall be turned to positive in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every misfortune shall be turned to divine fortune for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And he said in continuation, be not afraid, verse 22, ye be sort of field for the past, pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vast shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. Somebody shout, Amen. amen. And the cankerworm and the caterpillar. And the, the palmer one, my great army which I send among you, verse 26, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt how wondrously with you. How has he dealt with you? Wondrously. What kind of things will you be seeing after today? Wonders. Come on. What shall you be seeing after today? Wonders. Somebody who knows the answer. What shall you be seeing after today? What shall be the experience in your life after today? And shall praise the name of the Lord that I dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. You shall never be ashamed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whoever has been calculating shame for you. I decree it returns back on his or her head in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whoever has been anticipating and expecting that you will crash, he and his family shall crash on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. My people shall never be ashamed. Come rain or sunshine, they will never be ashamed. 
no matter the concoction from hell, they shall never be ashamed. Glory to God. Come on, say glory to God. So whoever is celebrating your downfall or your misfortune, tell him you're, you are celebrating too soon. Wait, let me finish the prayer and fasting. My God will answer me. My God will step into my situation. My God will turn around my circumstances for me. And that's what I see happening to you after now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I don't care what your present circumstance is. What I care about is what God will do after we finish this prayer and fasting. Why? Because he will do great things in your life. Praise God. But it comes as a result of taking personal responsibility. Nobody can fast on your behalf. Glory to God. Oh yes, people may pray for you and rest, but ultimately it is the deliverance you wrought by yourself that becomes permanent in your own life. There are certain things I'm walking in today by reason of what I knew and what I have known and what I have practiced over the years. Glory to God. There are certain things that I'm walking in today is a function of personal responsibility. The things I know and the things I've put into practice in time past. So by the time I come across similar challenges, I don't need to run to Japan. I know what to do. And by the time I do it, I see the answer come forth. Glory to God. Come on, say glory to God. Please understand this, that the benefits of salvation must be worked out in order for it to be experienced. The benefits of salvation must be worked out in order for it to be experienced. Philippians 2 verse 12, Paul speaking there said, uh, brethren, he said, uh, you have always obeyed, but now much more in my absence. He said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God has already declared you blessed, but in order for you to experience the blessing, you must engage spiritual forces for the blessings to find practical manifestation here on earth. You must work it out. And one way to work out your blessing, to work them into manifestation, is through the avenue of prayer and fasting. See, waiting upon the Lord is the key to supernatural strength. Waiting upon the Lord is the key to supernatural strength. And supernatural strength guarantees supernatural results. Supernatural strength guarantees supernatural results. You'll find all of that in the book of Isaiah 40, verse number 28 to verse number 31. Isaiah 40, from verse number 28 to verse number 31. He said, have you not known, have you not heard that the Lord, the Almighty, never grows weary, praise God, and doesn't faint? Have you not heard that before? Glory to God. He said, for he giveth power to the faint, and to him that has no strength, he has no might, he increases strength. To him that has no might, he increases strength. And then, uh, the Bible now says, uh, but they that do wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, they will mount up with wings like eagle. Come on, come on, come on. That's why I know that after this fasting and prayer, somebody here shall be changing levels in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you're that person, show it by shouting aloud, Amen. Yeah. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. Glory to God. Supernatural flight. Somebody here shall be taking on a supernatural flight after today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Say, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Some new strength, some new dimension of energy is transfused into them. That's why I know that as someone partake of the communion today, some new dimension of divine energy shall be transfused into you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> glory to God. Come on, say so glory to God. And when the energy of God is at work in your life, then you command that, that kind of result, his kind of result. When the energy of God has worked, when the power of God is at work in your life, then you command a heaven on earth dimension of results. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. But please take note that spiritual enlightenment is one of the benefits of prayer and fasting. Spiritual enlightenment is one of the benefits of prayer and fasting. We know that from Isaiah 58 and verse number 8. Isaiah 58 verse number 8. He said, then shall your light break forth as the morning. Amen. Then shall, as a result of your prayer and your fasting, your light shall break forth as the morning. Isaiah 58 verse number 8. Praise God. That's talking about spiritual illumination. Spiritual enlightenment. Praise God. God opening up the mysteries of his word unto you. God opening up your eyes, opening your eyes to see into the depths of his mysteries, of depth of his word. 
that comes as a result of prayer and fasting. Like we have heard severally from God's servant. He said, Lord, show me the secret of prosperity. And he went on a three-day fast. And in the course of the fast, the third day of the fast, the heavens opened. Praise God. His eyes popped open. His understanding popped open. And the voice of God came through to give him an understanding of what it takes to prosper. And today, we are swimming in that dimension as a ministry. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And as individuals, by virtue of that light which he got in the season of prayer and fasting. Praise God. Come as a praise God. So one of the benefits is enlightenment. And this is what you need to strengthen your faith. Are you hearing me, friends? Spiritual enlightenment is what empowers your faith to deliver in your life. Enlightenment empowers faith. That's why when you're in prayer and fast, like, like what, what happened in the story I just narrated to you right now, he got up and screamed, I can never be poor. And from that day, he has been working in that consciousness and in that dimension, believing God for its manifestation. And today, we can see it manifesting from one degree to another in his life and in his ministry. Glory to God. Why? His faith caught fire when his eyes of understanding popped open. What you see, you easily believe. What you see in God's word, you easily believe it. What your spiritual eyes can see, your faith can catch fire. Your faith is able to grasp it. Praise God. The reason why many find it difficult to believe what God has said is because they are yet to see it. They are yet to see it. They are yet to see it. And until they see it, it's never so in their lives. It's never manifested in their lives. So heaven and earth will be a dream until your faith catches fire. Until your faith catches fire. And that's the reason why we are embarking on this divine adventure of prayer and fasting. So that you and I can be able to see what God has said in this word. And then for our faith to latch on on it. And then for his power to, to begin to find expression in our lives. Therefore, you and I must do all it takes to give ourselves the opportunity or our spirit man the opportunity for light to dawn from heaven. And what do I mean by that? I mean you must take time to devour the word. Take time to sit on the word. During this season of prayer and fasting, take time to meditate on the truth of God's word. And as you do so, your spiritual eyes of understanding will pop open. I don't know about you, but I have been seeing things. I mean, some things are opening up to me in a dimension I've not seen them before. And I'm beginning to experience those things because that's what I was craving for. Praise the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It depends on what you're looking for. What I'm looking for, I'm beginning to see them and I'm beginning to experience them. Why? Because my eyes are opening to see. Within this prayer and fasting, you're watching television with my wife. And then that was on Sunday. We're watching TV on Sunday. And then uh, a scripture was flashed. This preacher was preaching at Bosch, Bosch, Hop, or Bosch Hop, at Bosch Hop, a South African man. They, uh, that was on Daystar television. So he was preaching and uh, he was talking about the title of his message was The Dream, The Dreamers, and, uh, and Finishers. Dream, Dreamers, and Finishers. That was the title of his message. And he was talking about Joseph. And he read the scripture of Joseph's uh, encounter with his father and uh, the dream that Joseph narrated to his father and his brothers. And the Bible said that the father rebuked him. You mean that myself and your mother and your brothers, we, shall we indeed bow to you? The Bible says, and uh, the, 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 he rebuked him. And the others were offended at him. But this portion of it, I never saw. I've read that thing several times. Said, but Jacob kept those, these things in his heart. I don't know. I said, what? I've never seen that in my Bible before. He said, it has been there. I said, I've, I said, I've never seen it until I've seen it now on television. <laughs> And it's about 30 years of Christianity. And I've read the story of Joseph several times. Several times. But that aspect of it has never... But in this season of prayer and fasting, boom! Wow! And J Jacob kept those things in his heart. So even though the boy said it and it looked unbelievable, but Jacob still was pondering on it. He said, what could this thing mean? Praise the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, so praise the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, so praise the name of Jesus Christ. And there are certain things, like this message I preached to you on Sunday, or rather on Monday here, when I preached on Monday here, and I, I, and I was telling you that all things were passed away, connecting with Revelation, Revelation 21, 
I, connect, I got it in this season of prayer and fasting. I never saw it like that before in my life until I was preparing for the message. Then Revelation 21 and 2 Corinthians 5, 17 just clicked. As I was reading, the Holy Ghost said, that is the same thing in 2 Corinthians 5. I said, ha! Ah. And I read it and said, wow! My spirit, my boom! These are part of the things I have seen that I'm swimming in right now. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. New things must happen in my life this year. Praise the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I shared part of what I got with you. But it's, I've never seen it like that before. It is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I've been reading it right from the day I got born again. But a new understanding done within this season of prayer and fasting. That is what prayer and fasting does to you. It opens your spirit, man. But until you give yourself over to studying and meditating on the word before the Holy Ghost can quicken scriptures, open them to your understanding and ignite your faith for supernatural experiences. After today, I see every scale on your eye destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I see new chapters open unto you by the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God. Amen. And when your faith is empowered, no devil can be able to stand your way. Matthew 17 and verse 20. Jesus said to them, the reason why the devil didn't come out is because this kind goeth not out by prayer and fasting. But he said to them, but if you have faith like grain of mustard seed, we shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and uh, it shall be done. And uh, nothing shall be impossible unto you. He said, but how be this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So your prayer and your fasting is what empowers your faith to deliver breakthroughs in your own life. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. The cord of prayer, the cord of, cord of fasting, and the cord of uh, faith. When the three are in operation, no devil is able to withstand you. That's why I know that within this season of prayer and fasting, and even after this season, this year, no devil, no obstacle standing your way shall be able to withstand you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But they shall bow before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So there is no witch in your village that you should be afraid of. No wizard that you should be afraid of. No circumstance should command your respect. You have the key to uproot them out of your path. Glory to God. Come on, so glory to God. And as I'm talking right now, somebody's faith is being stirred up for supernatural experiences this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Come on, so glory to God. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible in your business in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing shall be impossible in your career in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Glory to God. Prayer and fasting empowers your faith for supernatural delivery. And I see someone here delivered a miraculous in his or her life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. And as we engage ourselves in prayer and fasting, Praying for the needs of the kingdom. Praying for the needs of the kingdom. Praying for the needs of the kingdom. We begin to see God's strength hand manifested in our own lives. You know, friends, it has been said over and again that what you make to happen for others, God will make to happen for you. The cheapest way for you to attract God's hand at work in your life in this season of prayer and fasting is for you to begin to pray kingdom-oriented prayers. Kingdom oriented prayers. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things you are looking for, God will begin to add them to you. The cheapest way to do that is to pray kingdom oriented prayers. Glory to God. Come on, so glory to God. You know, Ephesians 6, verse 8. Ephesians 6, verse 8, the Bible declares that knowing this, that whatsoever good thing you do to others, God will do it. Unto you is there Ephesians 6 8. Whatsoever good thing thou doest, the same shall he receive. Whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bound or free. Whatsoever good thing any man doeth, knowing this, whatever good thing you do, when you begin to pray good over the life of your neighbor, over the life of your Christian brother, somebody you know that is challenged in one area or the other, you pick him up as your prayer project. And begin to pray for him. The Bible says you are inevitably bringing good on yourself. Glory to God. Come on, so glory to God. And that's the reason why we're given the intercessory guide last Sunday. We were given this intercessory guide for us to take advantage of. 
take advantage of these winner's intercessory prayer guidelines and begin to pray kingdom-oriented prayers in your private chambers for the needs of the kingdom, for the needs of God's people. And then you can see how fire begins to burn in your own life also. Pray, for example, for the word of God to come forth with impact and power when we, your ministers, are ministering. Amen? And then other ministers around the, 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 the commission, all over the commission, Lord, as our pastor stands to minister, let your word come forth with unction and power in the name of Jesus Christ. It takes prayer for the word of God to penetrate the hearts of men. We, your, we, your ministers, will pray before we stand on the altar. But much more than that also, you too need to pray in order for you to receive it the way God has ordained it to be in your own life. Glory to God. Come on, say so glory to God. Come on, say so glory to God. Very important. When you go home, you read the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1 and verse number 2 and verse number 5. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 2 and verse 5. You'll find where Paul speaking. He said, we pray for you always. And he said to them in verse 5 of 1 Thessalonians 1. He said, for the word of God came not unto you in words only. For, he said, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. Our gospel came not unto you in word only, but in power. The gospel must come in power in order for it to be established in the lives of men. And prayer is the key to ensure the word comes forth with unction and power and brings about desired effect in the lives of the hearers. And from today, I see God's word coming your way full of power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And of course also, the word of God, I mean prayer rather, prayer also empowers church growth. Our prayer is what brings about the growth of the kingdom. He said, ask of me and uh, I will give you the hidden for thine inheritance and the enter the earth for thy possession. That's Psalm 2 verse 8. As we pray church growth, Lord, bring in the multitudes. Lord, save them as they come. Lord, establish them. Lord, draw them wherever they are. As we pray those kingdom oriented prayers for church growth, then we begin to see the church of Jesus Christ uh, blowing and multiplying and increasing. If every one of us is praying that dimension of prayer and taking steps in the same direction, we begin to see an explosion in the house of the Almighty God. Glory to God. Come on, say glory to God. And when we pray such kingdom-oriented prayers, heavens open over our head and the rain of God's blessing begins to pour down on our lives. That's the cheapest way to provoking the release of God's power in your own life. Every single person here, you are here in order to fulfill divine agenda. God gave birth to you and brought into the kingdom in order for you to fulfill divine agenda. And that agenda will come to be as you begin to pursue after the welfare and the well-being of his kingdom. When you begin to pursue it, then his hand begins to rest upon your life. His power begins to be manifest in your life. Glory begins to be seen on your life. Doors begin to be opened for you. And uh, you begin to give God thanks and praise for his wondrous acts in your life. Praise the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, say praise the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, so praise the name of Jesus Christ. So as you are living here today, let your heart be craving for the things of the kingdom. Be panting after the things of God. And the more you pant after the things of God's kingdom, the more you begin to see his hand reflected and manifested in your own life. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Grace to keep pursuing after the things of the kingdom. Father, I ask for that grace right now. Praise the name of Jesus. That should be your prayer very shortly. But before we pray that prayer, everybody rise to your feet right now. Rise to your feet right now because it's time for you to begin to enjoy rain from heaven. God wants to rain down blessings. He said, and I will cause the rain to fall upon you. The former rain and the latter rain. The rain, the rain, the rain. The rain of his favor. The rain of his blessings is about to fall upon someone here today. Glory to God. But before we pray that prayer, you are here and you know that you know that your life is not right before God. Nobody needs to prophesy to you. You are the prophet of your own life. The word of God is prophesying to you right now. The spirit of God is talking to you right now. Your conscience is speaking to your heart. You know that things are not right between you and your God. Now that is one thing that will hinder your prayers from ascending to heaven. It will hinder your fasting from bringing results. All heads bowed, eyes closed one minute. All heads bowed, eyes closed one minute. You are here today and you are saying, Lord, I need your mercy upon my life. I just need your mercy. Help me and re restore me. Help me and restore me. I'd like to pray for such individuals right now. You are here and you are saying, Lord, I just came here today. I need your mercy. Just your mercy. Help me. Restore me. 
restore me. Have mercy upon me. Can I see your hand up wherever you are right now? Wherever you are right now, you're saying, have mercy upon me, oh God. Have mercy upon me, oh God. I just need your mercy. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I just need your mercy over my life. Glory to God. I need to rededicate my life to Christ. I need to recommit myself to Christ. Anybody out here tonight? Lord, I come to you today. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody out here tonight? I want to be saved. I want to rededicate my life to Christ. I want to reconnect myself to God. I need the mercy of God at work in my life. Anybody here crying for mercy? I need your mercy, oh God. Save me. Deliver me. Help me. Anybody out here tonight? Glory to God. If you are coming, come very quickly. Now, if your hands are up, we'd like you to come up here right now. If your hands are up, wherever you are, I'd like to come up here right now. Come. Let me pray for you. And God's mercy shall find expression in your life right now. Anybody out here now? Any more out here? You want to give your life to Jesus? Or you want to dedicate your life to Christ? You need his mercy. You need to reconnect back to him. Wherever you are right now tonight, glory to God. Anybody out here tonight? Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The rest of you, stretch your hands towards communion right now. And go ahead and pray that, Lord, as I partake of this communion, I let your power find expression in my life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grace to maintain my place in, in the, uh, on, on the altar of prayer. Grace to press into the things of the kingdom. Grace to keep craving after the things of God. I receive that grace right now. Go ahead and receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of your son Jesus, I sanctify this table and declare the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. As we partake of this communion tonight, I decree fresh grace to stand strong in kingdom oriented prayers comes upon every partaker right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace to maintain our place in the prayer chamber. We receive it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By this communion today, I decree, let the power of God go into operation in the life of every partaker and uproot every obstacle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By this communion, I decree, let every form of sickness or weakness or disease or oppression die right now and disappear out of your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ. By this communion, I decree favor from heaven to locate every partaker here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are blessed forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for doing it. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen and amen and amen. Please be comfortably seated and partake of communion by faith as the choir minister unto us. I will praise the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul. I will praise the Lord. I will sing to him. Oh, thank you, son. He has given me. He has given me. A... I will praise the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul. I will praise the Lord. I will sing to him a oh, thank you song. He has given me, he has given me. Yeah. I will praise the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul. I will praise the Lord. I will sing to him, oh, oh thank you, son. He has given me, he has given me. Yeah. I 
will praise the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul. I will praise the Lord. I will sing to Him. Oh, thank you, son. He has given me. He has given me. Joy that I have, oh. the joy that I have, oh. He has given me. Come on, jump up if you have to get the joy up. that I have, oh. Let's give him praise, hallelujah. Oh, he has given me the job that I have, oh. He has given me. He has given me. The house that I have, oh. Hey, my God is good, oh. Hey, hey, my God is good, oh. Hey, my God is good, oh. my God is good, oh. Hey, my God is good, oh. Everything na dabo dabo. Everything na dabo dabo. Come on, come on, dabo. Everything na dabo dabo. Your finances the dabo dabo. Your household dabo dabo. Your promotion na dabo dabo. Everything na dabo dabo. Hey, my God is good, oh. My God is good. Oh. Hey, my God is good. Oh. Hey, my God is good. Oh. Everything that I bow double. Everything that I bow double. Your household double double. Come on. Your finances double double. Everything that double double. Come on, give me a shot. Praise God. Come as a praise the Lord. The Lord is good. And all the time. After today, they will call you. I said they will call you. I said they will call you. And they will hand you your promotion letter in the name of Jesus Christ. They will call you. And they will hand the documents for the new contract in the name of Jesus Christ. They will call you and they will hand you your new employment letter in the name of Jesus Christ. They will call you and deliver good news to you in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be for someone here. I said so shall it be for someone here in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are not someone let your amen show it. Praise God. You are blessed forever. But the secret is to pray kingdom-oriented prayers. When you are praying kingdom-oriented prayers, then God will move heaven and earth in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. You are blessed forever. Don't forget, tomorrow we are coming back here 5.30 p.m. is the time. And then we have the flyers still available. Amen. The flyers are available. I believe you've gotten copies already. Glory to God. Ensure the flyers are used to distribute, to, to, to invite your neighbors, your friends and colleagues. Amen. At least three people should follow the church on Sunday. But even before then, tomorrow, invite them to partake of the prayers. And then Kesha is on Friday, 1 a.m. is the time. And we shall partake of the mystery of the feet washing as we receive prophetic declaration from the mouth of God's servant, uh, the apostle over this commission in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a Kesha you cannot afford to miss. Because as your feet are treated, come on, when your feet are washed, every form of leprosy will be flushed out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. As your feet are washed, divine speed shall become your portion this year, 2015, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
as your feet are watch whatever has chained you down shall be broken and destroyed in the mighty name of jesus christ so don't miss it for anything be available you and your family members in the mighty name of jesus christ and of course saturday we are breaking our fast at our various cell locations and sunday we are coming for the covenant day of restoration in which god shall restore whatever satan has taken away from you and your family in the mighty name of jesus christ remember today is day number 10 we're already almost halfway through day number 10 halfway through amen we are halfway through we are about halfway through glory to god but it is day that endure to the end that shall receive the prize so as you press on in this 21 days prayer and fasting i see god's mighty hand rest upon you and give you some unusual open doors in the mighty name of jesus christ